Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, we're going to continue reviewing all the factoring techniques with which you must be familiar in order to do your best on the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, particularly on the Mathematics Knowledge Subtest. Just to recap, uh, so far I've discussed how to use the quadratic formula. And in addition, I've also discussed how to factor quadratic equations when the leading coefficient is 1 as well as not 1. Uh, in case it's not obvious, all these, uh, these first three objectives apply to quadratic equations. And in, in case that's not obvious, that only applies to equations that are of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. As you'll see in just a minute, uh, these last two uh, factoring techniques are going to apply to cases in which we're dealing with something other than quadratic equations. So uh, just bear in mind that these first three things will make up 95% of what you'll see on the ASVAB, and you have maybe a 5% chance of seeing something from uh, either of these two topics on the ASVAB. That said, uh, these topics are very simple to learn, uh, so it's a good idea to uh, to be familiar with them. Again, uh, since the ASVAB is a computer adaptive test, you want to get as many right as you can. And if you get one of these questions, chances are it's going to be straightforward. And as you'll see in just a minute, these usually take about 10 seconds each to solve. Um, in case it's helpful, I'm also going to include a link to this factoring guide in the description of this video. Uh, as I go through this series on factoring, uh, it's a good idea to have this up just so you can make use of it as you practice some of these problems on your own. Uh, that said, factoring by grouping is something you really have to learn by doing. So instead of looking at the factoring guide, we're going to go ahead and get started with some practice problems. Again, as I just mentioned, everything uh, I've discussed so far has been applicable to quadratic equations that are that is equations of the type of the form ax squared plus bx plus c uh, that is there's three terms which would make this a trinomial and the highest power in this equation is squared uh, sometimes this is also called a quadratic trinomial for that reason uh, if you look at number one however you can see we have 12a cubed minus 9a squared plus 4a minus 3. And as you can see, unlike this quadratic equation, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 terms in this equation. And uh, in addition, uh, the highest power is now 3 instead of our cubed instead of squared. So in light of that, you'd have to recognize that you can't use any techniques we've discussed so far. Uh, instead, uh, you're going to have to use factoring by grouping to uh, try to factor these problems. Um, let's go ahead and talk about factoring by grouping. The easiest way to learn factoring by grouping is realizing that uh, you can break this equation in half by imagining there's a line here. And then what you want to do is pull out a greatest common factor from this first pair of terms and then a greatest common factor from the second pair of terms and then combine those to factor this fully. Uh, so let's take a look at what we can do. Again, uh, disregard this 4a minus 3 right now. We're focusing on this first pair of terms, notably 12a cubed minus 9a squared. My goal is to pull out its greatest common factor and as we can see, the greatest common factor between uh, 9 and 12 is going to be 3. So I'm going to pull out a 3. And the greatest common factor between a cubed and a squared is a squared. In pulling that out, we can see I'm left with 4a minus 3. Okay. So with that first half done, uh, let's focus on these next two, uh, this next pair of terms, notably 4a minus 3. Again, we want to pull out the greatest common factor between these two. And more specifically, 
we want that greatest common factor that we pull out to give us this same value in parentheses here. So let's think about how we're going to do that in this case. Uh, again, 4 and 3, there's no real common factor between those. And this one has A and no A. So to get, to get this, uh, to pull out a factor such that it gives me what's in uh, parentheses here, I'm simply going to pull out a positive 1. And that's going to leave me with 4A minus 3. As you can see, uh, what's in parentheses now matches. Uh, so in order to factor this fully, what we're going to do is gonna we're going to combine these two into one set of term, one pair, 3a squared plus 1. And then we're going to combine these two into our other pair. And that's it. It's fully factored. So that's all there is to factoring by grouping. Uh, break the equation into two parts pull out a gr the greatest common factor from the first pair, pull out a the greatest common factor from the second pair, such that it matches what's in parentheses, parentheses in the first pair, and then group them accordingly, and you're done. So let's go ahead and do number two. Again, uh, if it's helpful, try to imagine that you're dealing with two separate uh, pairs of uh, variables here. So Again, this whole equation is 2p cubed plus 5p squared plus 6p plus 15. Uh, we're going to focus right now on these first two terms, notably 2p cubed plus 5p squared. And more specifically, we're going to try to pull out the greatest common factor. Uh, 2 and 5 don't, have a, don't share a, a factor, but p cubed and p squared, we can pull out a p squared from that. And that leaves us with 2 p uh, plus 5. Okay, so now we're going to shift our attention to this next pair of terms, notably 6p plus 15. And again, our goal is to pull out the great, greatest common factor such that it gives us what we have here in parentheses already. So uh, 6 and 15 share a factor of 3, so I'm going to pull out a positive 3. And that's all I can pull out since there's a p here and no p there. That's going to leave me with uh, 2p plus 5. And as you can see, by throw, pulling out that factor of 3, it created uh, it, it allowed me to create the same thing in parentheses. So now we just combine these two as one set of solutions, namely p squared plus 3. And we combine these two as our other set, 2p plus 5. 5. And in doing so, we now say that this one is fully factored. Okay. So that's all there is to those. Um, at this point in the video, if you want to go ahead and pause it and try the rest of these on your own, that's a good idea. Again, the more you practice on your own, the better you'll get at these and the easier they'll be on test day. But that said, let's move on to number three. Again, I like to think about breaking these into two pairs. Uh, so to start, I'm going to focus on 3n cubed minus 4n squared, and I'm going to try to pull out the greatest common factor between those two. Uh, I can't pull out anything from 4 and 3, but I can pull out an n squared, which will leave me with uh, 3n minus 4. Now focusing on this second pair, I want to pull out uh, a factor such that it gives me this 3n minus 4 in parentheses again. And as we can see, we have 9 and 12, which has a greatest common factor of uh, 3. So we're going to pull out a 3, which will leave us with 3n minus 4. Again, combine these two terms as one set of solutions. So n cubed plus 3. Combine these as your other set. 3n minus 4. And just like that, this is fully factored, and it's done so via grouping. And again, it took one, two steps to do so. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to number four. Again, if it's helpful, you can draw that line and imagine you're working on these uh, in pairs. 
Uh, notably, on the first for the first pair, we're trying to find the greatest common factor between 12 and cubed and 4 and squared. Uh, I know 4 goes into both 12 and 4, and I can pull out similarly in n squared. That's going to leave me with 3 and plus 1. And again, uh, I want to pull out a factor between uh, in the second ordered, the second pair of second pair such that I have 3n plus 1 in parentheses again. So I'm going to pull out simply a 1, which is going to leave me with 3n plus 1. And as you can see, we can now group this accordingly and find our solutions. So the first thing I'm going to do is write those two together, 4n squared plus 1. And then the next set is going to be these two, which is 3n plus 1. And in doing so, we can now say that this is fully factored. All right, so let's move on to number five. Again, if it's helpful, just imagine you're working on this uh, in two different segments. Uh, from this first pair, notably m cubed minus m squared, you can pull out a m squared, well, which will leave you with m minus one. And from this second pair, you can pull out a two, which will leave you with m minus 1. Again, we know our solution is going to be found by combining these two, m squared plus 2, as well as these two, which is going to be m minus 1. Just like that, we factored this one by grouping. Again, took two steps. All right, finally, we have 5n cubed minus 10n squared plus 3n minus 6. Again, if it's helpful, imagine breaking these apart. Uh, again, we want to pull out a greatest common factor from 5n cubed minus 10n squared to start. And we can see that 5 and 10 have 5 in common, and n cubed and n squared have n squared in common. So now we're going to simply factor that out, and it's going to leave you with n minus 2. And again, now we want to pull out the greatest common factor that's going to hopefully give us what's in parentheses again. As we can see, we have 3n minus 6. We can pull out a positive 3, which is going to leave us with n minus 2. And now we know our solution is going to be found by combining these two, 5n squared plus 3, as well as these two, which is n minus 2. And that's it. This one's fully factored. Um, again, uh, that's all there is for today's video. Uh, factoring by grouping is one of those uh, unique factoring techniques that really can't be used to solve a lot of these. But when you see it, you have to recognize that you can use it. Again, whereas these first three uh, topics that I covered this week are going to cover about 95% of what you need to know on the ASVAB, it's still a good idea to be familiar with how to factor by grouping. Uh, in case you happen to get one of those on the ASVAB. I remember getting one, and it was pretty straightforward. It literally said factor. So, um, again, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, it's one of my shorter videos on factoring. Once we cover factoring the difference of two squares, which, again, is going to be short like this video, you'll pretty much have, uh, we'll have reviewed pretty much everything every possible factoring technique that you'll have to use on the ASVAB. So uh, if you like this content, uh, consider su subscribing to my channel. In addition, you can always leave some feedback in the comment section below. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.